This is call number 10, and we're gonna talk about how to not only prevent scope creep, but how to eliminate it. So first off, let's just start off with what is scope creep. And scope, the scope of work or the SOW, it defines the project requirements and deliverables. Uh, the scope creep, it's a term that is used when projects requirements increases past what was initially agreed on. And it's often, often due to clients request, uh, requesting additional work and changes throughout the course of the project. So here are a few examples of scope creep in web design projects. You know, one is clients, they're changing their minds midway through the project. Another one is clients, they keep asking for additional work that was not stated at the beginning of the project and that is also not in the contract or agreement. Clients, they're not providing content and assets on time, causing the project to delay in having updates to their sites at a later time. And the reason why I include this in the scope creep right here is because this does add on to the workflow. Thing is, when we schedule a client's project to be done on time and they don't provide us the materials, they wait till later, but at a later time, most likely we're already working on another project. And so now this is adding extra work while we're already working on another project, which is this is scope creep. It's adding just more to the work scope. And clients not communicating. And also, again, that causes uh, delay. And then uh, the last one, clients, they keep requesting multiple revisions. So can you relate? <laughs> I think we all can. I think we have all been there. We have felt the pain of scope creep, the stress, the frustration, the burnout, but I can tell you it can be cured. And the reason why I'm saying that is because I, I could say to everyone that when I started off my first two years, I don't think I had one project that did not have scope creep in it. Uh, every project I dealt with, some had little scope creep, some had massive scope creep. One of the worst cases that I've had, we did a site for a nonprofit for free and the site lasted over one year it was supposed to be a really quick simple job and it just got so out of control we could not stop it and it became a year's worth of a headache but today this doesn't happen anymore and i'm going to let you know what i've done and i've changed in my workflow with the way we communicate with clients and the processes we have in place in order to just stop it completely. So there's a few elements that you need in order to cut out scope creep. Uh, one of them is going to be open communication. And in fact, communication is the key to it. It's the most important part of making sure that the project has clear understanding. So with the communication, this needs to start early on and it has to be clear. It should be established as well from both sides. And also with the communication, you always need to be professional, positive, helpful, but assertive. You need to stand up for your processes and agreements, but just don't do it in a rude way. So real quick, before we go on to more, I'm gonna open it up for Q&A. We're gonna take breaks in between the different elements and just give feedback on, you know, maybe your experience with uh, uh, communication with clients, maybe something that you do right now or something that you think that you might should do that could help out. I have a question like about the communicating with the clients that uh, somebody who doesn't respond. I had, a, I had a client a few months before. He doesn't see the message for like five days or seven days whenever I send a message and then he replies me back one week later which means one message come and back takes two weeks and then that delays a lot of you know the project and then how do you usually chase a client in this kind of case? So we don't chase them anymore. I used to chase them uh, but we don't. In fact what we do is in the very beginning uh, we have it in our contract. They have three business days to respond and to give feedback. And also in 10 business days that they do not respond to us, 
the project is automatically canceled, mm -hmm. payments are owed, and if they want to continue, they have to start a brand new agreement. And I make sure I communicate this with the client before we even begin. And I mm -hmm. tell the client that in order for us to have a successful project, for mm -hmm. me to do my job, you have mm -hmm. to be available for communication. Mm -hmm. And like you cancel the contract means that like you need, you still keep your deposit from the project, right? Most definitely. Yeah. And we also have it in our contract. Deposits are not refundable unless mm -hmm. for some reason uh, we cannot hold up our end of the agreement. But that deposit is non-refundable. If you're not putting it in your contract yet, uh, definitely put it in going from now on forward. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. Cool. Anyone else have anything? Any questions? Any feedback? All right, cool. Let me go ahead and keep it rolling. Oh, we're still on screen share. See, I'm still trying to figure out these Zoom settings. I've been doing it for long enough. I should know it, but we're getting there. All right, so the second one. So the first one is communication. Now, the second key to keeping things within the initial scope is setting expectations. Under promise and over deliver. And this is where we define the scope. We need to be very clear in what you will be delivering. Uh, the client should have a clear understanding of what will be delivered. And this is really important. Do not overpromise trying to win the project. Now, when I was new and I wanted to, I wanted to really impress the new potential client, I really wanted the job. I was just so gung ho with like, yeah, we could do that. Yeah, we could do this. That's not a problem. Oh, that would be easy. No problem. As they were just throwing things my way. And what that does is we're setting wild expectations for the client. The client then thinks from the very beginning they could do anything they want when we do that. So we need to set them lower and we need to be realistic on it. But here's a key under promise and over deliver. I've used this in my thinking when I'm talking with the client. Like I'm always thinking this. This is like something that's in my mind. When I start to like get carried, carried away and I start to talk about all the things we could do, like I just remember this right here and I, I ring it back because I already know that I'm going to go above and beyond for the client. I know that I'm going to do extra. Now, when I say we're going to prevent and eliminate scope creep, that does not mean I'm not going to go above and beyond and do more than what I said I was going to do. But I'm going to do that on my, as my decision and not from the client's decision. So, but and I'm doing that too because if you set the expectations right and then you do more than those expectations without the client asking, you're going to make a super happy client. But if you do things the other way around, you're going to you're going to open up this 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 uh, you're just going to open it up for revisions, requests, all kinds of stuff. And, you know, possibly just trying to please a client that's going to be hard to please. So here are the steps that we take in defining the SOW and the SOW is a scope of work. Uh, first one, it comes within the discovery and consultation. And this is this is where we're talking with the client where we have our first call where we're kind of like where we're getting all the questions out and you could do this on your first call you could also do this with a, a, a spec sheet uh, any way that you're gathering all the information that you're trying to figure out what needs to be done on the website like how many pages does does there need to be uh, you know is there going to be a blog on it what kind of functionalities are going to have uh, like you just want to gather all the information that you're actually going to be doing. Those are going to be your deliverables. Now, once you have all those, the next step is you want to jump into the proposal and you want to list all the deliverables that you're going to give inside the proposal. You want to be detailed with your scope inside there. After you send the proposal to the client, you give them a chance to over to, to check it out get their feedback, ask them, is this, is this okay? Is there anything else we need to add in here? Is there anything else we need to take away? What's, what's make sure we, we got the list down right of what we need to do. And once you guys have agreed on that, then you make the contract. And in your contract, you write down that exact list that you guys agreed on just as detailed. 
and that's going to be your agreement. That's what you hold on to throughout the whole project. Uh, that's it. That's something you could always go back to. But the whole process starts in the very beginning, being able to define that scope. The next thing you also want to do inside of it is you want to detail your process. You want to define your process to the client and let them know how the project will flow. And these are what steps you will take and the timeline for each step. This should go into the proposal and should be discussed and get the client's confirmation that they approve and then add it to the contract. Now what I mean by the process, we want the client to know step by step what we're going to do. We want them to know like, okay, like this is, this is like a typical process for us. We let them know that, okay, this first week we're going to do, uh, we're going to do our uh, discovery. We're going to do our research and we're going to start doing our wireframes and getting the design going. The second week we're going to go ahead and we're going to finish a design, send it out for review and finish a revision within that week. The second and third week we're going to be working on development. On the fourth week you'll be able to have a revision for for the developed site you know, and give us a feedback on the fifth week we'll complete that revision do testing and go live when you lay everything out like that and you add it to a timeline you have created the structure of the project you have put the project into a form that there is substance throughout the whole thing there's a step-by-step -step guide on how you're going to work this and the client is going to take you more serious as well they're going to see that this had this is something that is built in a certain way and to deviate from that way uh, that that'll mess up the process so detailing your work outside of the scope now first off uh, if a client wants to ask for more work that is totally fine uh, don't push back I do I don't push back on clients when a client starts to like want to like you know and midway through the project when they come and they're like you know what we thought that we might want to add this or we might want to change this or we might want to do something if they want to do it like my reaction to them is hey do you know what? i think that's a good idea uh sure why do you want to do that okay cool no problem we could go ahead and do that for you but this is what it's going to take so what we do is we create a process for the client a system for them to have this extra work so from the very beginning, there is something ready for them. So we don't want to limit them. It is their business and their website empathize with them. You know, like I work hard on my business just like everyone here does. And if you're paying a lot of money for something that you feel is important for your business, you don't want to be limited. If you feel like you have something else you want to do, you want to be helped with it. So our job is to help with it. But have something in place and ready. Uh, in the contract and in, and in the agreement. So the client, they understand what defines out of the scope work is and what the cost will be. Create a process for this. And just to give you an example, here's our process that we use currently. So th this is for us. Uh, develop your own process. Figure out your own. Unfortunately, you're probably going to have to go through quite a few scope creep and really difficult projects to learn, but the more you go through them, uh, you could take away from them and add that to your process and find a way to prevent it later. So our process is, we set an hourly rate for small changes that are estimated around 10 to 15 hours underneath that. So if they want something small change, it's like, okay, that's fine, no problem, uh, but this is outside of the scope of work from our agreement, so we're gonna have to bill extra hourly on that. Are you okay with that? And then, you know, they're either going to agree or they're going to say, you know what, no, let's, let's just keep things as the way they are. And if they come for larger changes, so if it's a large change, like they need a very big function coming in. Say they need to change like they want everything multi-language and want it to be in four different languages all of a sudden. It's already a big site. Well, that's a big change right there. We can't really do that one hourly. So what we need to do at that point is we need to pause the project and we need to give an additional quote. And the timeline, we also need to update the timeline. Uh, it needs to be updated and also additional charges will need to be paid in advance. So if the client comes, 
and they say, you know what, we just thought of something we feel is absolutely necessary. We have to have this done on our site right now. And it's pretty big. What we do is we go ahead and halt the project. We say, sure, let's go ahead and pause the project. We'll have to readjust the timeline. And let me give you a quote for that. And I'll come back and I'll give them a quote. I'll be like, okay, we could do that, but it's going to be like $1,000. If they agree on it, that's fine. But you also need to pay that $1,000 up front. Uh, anything, any of those addition chunks, because we don't want to be out of pocket. One thing we want to be careful of is that the client doesn't owe too much money. And I also found out to do this to learning the hard way by collecting the money up front because it makes them think twice again on the second one. From my experience when I did this and I try to put the money at the end, like pay us at the end with the final bill, it was a lot easier for them to keep adding stuff. And then the bill was overwhelming for them. We would get paid, but you know, it was a challenge you know, for, for both of us, for us and the client. So we do this for us to protect us, but we're also trying to protect the client. Uh, another thing is we have to consider the timeline change in the charges since this may interfere with projects later on. So if the client asks for a big change, it's going to probably cost a little bit more than we normally would do because we have to figure in those extra charges. Uh, when we're already on track, we have a defined timeline. First off, it took my time to put that together. And we have other projects too as well we have to manage. So now we got to rearrange everything over here. We have to change up the schedule. We got to change up how we're running everything. And that has to be considered in the extra cost as well. So let's go ahead and take another break, uh, do a QA. and a I'm going to stop the screen share so everyone can see each other. And uh, yeah, feel free to jump in if you have any questions or any feedback or comments. What's up, Rajav? You've been quiet. How you doing, man? Hi. Namaste. <laughs> I'm doing great. I was just... Uh... Listening to your uh, valuable information, I remember it because uh, some certain kind of information I asked you personally uh, when we started these calls when I was making my initial scope of work. So I am trying to match it with uh, this uh, PDF sheet and it's uh, more useful in a detailed way now. So I was just going through it, not being too quiet. I just had my dog around. So I was playing with it ah. for a while. You know? <laughs> she just came well, in. back there sleeping. The <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like your, I couldn't see yours because your setup is changing these days. And you know, it's <laughs> nice to see it like that. Cool. Um, but uh, one thing I want to add up here, um, I was paying attention what you were saying that scope of work uh, is a uh, plays a very important role um, because that's why we are having this call mm. because and it's always nicer to put it in your uh, contracts and proposals because uh, it's better if it is written in somewhere uh, you know as a contract so that it doesn't keep on creeping on to you otherwise sometimes uh, as we have discussed before that Customers think that it's a small change to just add their things, but it takes a certain number of hours and you can't keep keeping in, you know, can't keep mm. taking all those uh, scope creeps in between the project. And uh, one of the scope creeps, very popular one is like when the customer disappears. I was uh, listening to Minju. I think she just said, what you do in this situation? And you quite answered her in the best way possible that, you know, you don't need to chase them because in the way you want your uh, things to be completed, they also want their website to be completed and not hanging, but it's always better to put it in the contract, I think. And I have started doing that, you know, I mean, just make a one page contract about uh, the content and uh, how soon they get back to you and be ready to call up the contract if they are not able to work as per timelines, I think. Um, last week we did talk about this Timelines are important, not only for you. Don't be an order taker, as we said in the last call, but be in a partnership. And when you are in a partnership, it's a both first job, not only you being the web designer and developer. So hence, it's always uh, ideal to keep those fine line of difference between taking an order and being in a partnership. So it, it works out greatly like that. And 
I do have an example. I have been working with a short example. Uh, I've been working with a client for the last three months, you know, and uh, last few days when these uh, lockdowns and things started, I wanted to take some time off for myself. This was me putting off the project. She wanted to get some things done, but I told her that, you know, I'm going to go on a break for like 10 days and I hope it's not a problem for you and everything. And she was happy to accept it. Not like, no, you know, people should realize that when they can go on a break, there is a possibility I might need some time for myself, maybe to work on a different project or maybe to just work on myself. So if you are setting the expectations right, I think it shouldn't be up for anyone involved in the process, you know. It's all about the expectations and not taking the orders that you said the last call. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, man. And you caught it. You caught it. Like, actually, uh, like these calls right now, I'm trying to do certain things in order right now so they kind of flow into each other, you know, for to get things started right here. Yes. Cause, yeah. and, and the thing is, like, these right here are things I wish I knew when I started. It took me it took me a couple years of, you know, uh, the headaches and, and going through the experiences. And I really feel like sharing experiences could help someone else avoid that and go quicker, go faster on it. True. I agree with you. And that uh, it's a blessing for all of us who have been able to get these valuable insights coming from you because you have been in this for a while and for anyone new. I, I personally want to say that whatever I have learned over these calls, starting from the month of uh, February, when we started or late January, I think it's been everything, whatever I have been able to put into this, it's been like, helped me a lot on my initial journey and, you know, to make my mark, not only just to grab the project as people are doing on uh, platforms like Fever and Freelancer, but just to, get into the market by giving yourself respect as well and not making websites for $50, you know, what people have been doing just to get the project. They will do everything for you. But it's about time. So I have personally have gained a lot of experience. Today, man, I was uh, not willing to get on the call. I mean, I, I, I didn't remember today's the call. I was eating my lunch and I was like, I saw your notification call in half an hour. And I was like, uh oh, I am not ready for this call, you know, I'm just eating. And then I kind of moved things around. Uh, I had to get on a call with a client, but kind of postponed it and get on here to learn a bit more and then take it further. So, All thank right. You for this. Well, thank you. I appreciate that, Rajav. But definitely don't turn down calls for clients. <laughs> Don't don't lose a project. Don't lose your project. Even for an hour, yes, for sure, for sure. But you know, no, it's always cool. uh, nice to gain insights. I just told the potential client that I will get on with her after an hour or two, and she was okay with it. So I was like, okay, maybe I. When you can move things, you can move things. Priorities, you know. <laughs> cool, man. Well, I'm really glad to hear. I'm really glad to hear, man. All right. Does anybody have any questions before we continue with the slide? All right, cool. I'm going I to go. to say something? Yeah, so, for sure. Um, this is not related to the project, and I'm sorry if I'm taking a lot of time in the call. No problem. This is, the, I, this is, I think, I'm seeing you the first time without the cap, and your hairstyle does look dope, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks. Yeah, I like your hair I was just yeah. saying. <laughs> I was yeah, just... But, yeah, but I like without without it looks good. Yeah, I like your haircut. I get that a lot. Are you a lot of people. A barber? What's that? Are you getting a barber? Are you getting a barber in this lockdown? You <laughs> man, you gotta know how to do things. I got get fine connections. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I found one to come over. Sounds good. Yeah. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. I'm starting to get a little blushing now. I'm not used to <laughs> compliments and stuff. But. All right. All right. Cool. Let, let's go ahead with the slide. Uh, let me share the screen again. All right. Can you guys see okay? All right. Cool. So let's go ahead to the next uh 
the next important part of managing the project and keeping the scope creep uh, down to none. All right, so we've already talked about communication, setting expectations, and now the next part is going to be project management. And now it's up to the designer and it's their responsibility to keep the project on track as defined in the proposal, contract, and agreement. So the project management, you have to have a defined timeline. Have a defined design and development process. Outline the steps you will take and to make sure you're following those steps and staying within those timelines. And this is so important. This is why in the very beginning, we let the client know this is our process and this is how we're going to achieve what you hired us to do. And this is the time that it's going to take. Now that you have that already there, it's up to you to stay within this time frame. Because the thing that'll happen is if you let this slide, if you for some reason, uh, you know, maybe get busy on another job or something else comes in the way and you fall behind on the project and you try to play catch up, uh, it's going to open up doors to, to scope creep. And once you open up those, it's really hard to close. And that's when the project starts to go wrong. So this is a real, this is an important skill to develop. And it, it takes a little bit of time. Like it's a skill in its own uh, to learn project management. Uh, you know, there's just ways of organizing yourself and ways of using processes and systems. And if you're new, uh, you're probably already looking at building those and refining them. And, and I could let you know that right now, uh, I'm still refining mine. It's a constant, uh, it's a constant process of refining processes and getting them more streamlined. So those are, those are the important elements right there. The project management, the uh, setting expectations, and most definitely the communication. Now, what happens? If the client fails to provide content images or assets or communications on the time agreed. So it's all good now. We, we could write a contract and we could talk with the client and we could get them to understand from the very beginning that this is how the project is going to go. This is the scope of work. This is what we agreed on. But thing is, the clients are still going to push. They're still going to try. Uh, they still might start to fall short on their responsibilities. It, it's part of the nature, I mean, and we can't really like point fingers because people get busy uh, and we can't really, you know, uh, uh, see how to say it. We, we can't like get upset at them when that happens. We have to expect it. Expecting it to happen and being prepared. And that is how you're going to save yourself inside these situations. Now you wanna have a process in place for the clients that don't communicate well or follow the timeline on content. So for content, uh, you give the client the options and the responsibility. Uh, first, first off, making it clear of uh, their responsibility and letting them know about other clients' difficulties with content and images. I let our clients know from the very beginning. I let them know that, you know, content and images are your responsibility. Uh, we need to get them really soon. And if not, you know, this could, uh, this could make your project go on really long. This could prevent you from having uh, what you hired us to do. And I let them know too. I'm like, I let our clients know. Collecting content is one of the hardest things, one of the biggest challenges we get from other clients but we have some things we could do to help. Would you like us to help out with that? So we give them options. And uh, here's a few options, examples of what you could do to help out with content with your clients. Uh, first option, uh, you can let them know to provide their own content and images, uh, but give them a deadline. They have a date they have to deliver this by. And again, that goes back to the timeline. If it isn't delivered by a set date, then they will need to add it themselves at a later time, or they'll have to be billed additional charges for us to add it later after the project. So we can let them know they have these options. Now, first off, we're using Elementor here. So I really feel content shouldn't be the biggest headache when we're using Elementor. 
because it's not that difficult to add. And you could always let the clients know, look, we need it by this date. If you don't, we'll have to have extra charges because it's going to cost us to rearrange our schedule and everything. But if you want, you could go ahead and add it yourself whenever you're ready. Option number two. Uh, we could offer content writing and photography as a service and charge it for them. Uh, now, this is only if you're comfortable doing this. Uh, you could always hire a freelance copywriter. And photography is a little tricky. It, it could work out if you're working locally with someone. If you're working with the business close by, it might be tricky if they're remote. But still, you could go ahead and offer it to them or see if they could hire someone for it. Uh, but definitely, uh, I would offer content writing services. Uh, there's a lot of uh, resources out there to get this done, and it could be a good way for you to make extra money on it. You know, like if we do hire content writing, let's just say an example, we hire a content writer for a project. The project is a 10-page website. The content writer wants to charge $1,000 for the 10-page website. Uh, we would charge the client $1,500 or $2,000 because we need to first manage that content writer and we also need to we're also taking the risk on it so you know if it all goes well the content writer does their job well uh, it's a good way to earn extra profit on the project and then option number three is uh, this is one that works very well for us especially using elements uh, we prepare the site to have content added and then we just do a training session uh, you could do one, you could pay for the training session, charge them for the training session, and let them go and add it on their own. Uh, with Elementor, I feel like it's really made to update content and images easily. And I, I don't think that there's any reason to hold a client back from updating it themselves. Now, I have to say, though, I feel it is a responsibility for a web designer uh, to be able to place the content in the sections. Now, as a web designer, I'm not just making the website look good. There's other things that I have to consider. I have to consider uh, the title tag structure for SEO. So most of the time, I'm already doing title tags for clients because that's part of the design. Another part of the design is content placement and content strategy. So we're already placing okay, right here, this is where we need to talk about this. Right here, we need to put the features and we need to talk about this right here. Right here, we'll put the title, we'll put a block of text and say, right here, we need to describe this in this way. And usually what I do is, I'll go ahead and put the content everywhere it needs to go and just add a line or two of text in it, giving directions on what to add inside of it. And then we can let the client do it on their own. So this is what you need to make clear inside your contract, inside your discussions. Uh, you need to set terms and conditions uh, in the contract and what will happen if the client fails to provide materials and does not communicate acceptably. Uh, so number one, uh, the communication. Uh, going back to what uh, you know I mentioned earlier was that clients, this is in our contracts, clients have three business days to respond and give feedback. If the client does not respond within 10 business days, the contract is canceled and a new agreement is needed to start the work over again. Also, anything owed must be paid. Now, we got this, uh, we started doing this and found out that this is what the big agencies do. Uh, big agencies, they're not chasing people down and they don't tolerate people disappearing. Uh, they just don't do it. So why should a freelancer that is new do it? So that's where we adopted this uh, terms and conditions. Number two for content, images and assets. Uh, we give clients a set date to provide these. If not, uh, they're responsible to either add it themselves or to pay the late fee for us to add it later. And then three, the timeline. Um, this is super important right here. We set timelines for the projects and the deliverables and the payments also. And this includes a completion date and a final payment date. We have a date from the very beginning of the project. We say this date, this is a day that your project is going to be finished. And this is also the day when the final payment needs to come through. So if the client doesn't want to give content, 
if they are too busy to focus on their website or the project right now, like it was a good idea before, but now they're too busy, that's totally fine. Uh, it's like, I don't fault the client for that. I understand that things come up and maybe they'll have to come back to it later. And that's how I treat it. I let the client know like, that's totally fine if you're not ready right now. Uh, but we did all of our part. Everything is done on our end on there. Uh, and here's our final invoice. This is a date that it's due by. So we already established a final date for everything. And this is why project management is so important. Because if you if you slip up in the project management part of the project and you start to fall late, then it, it just messes everything up. But if you can be on top of it, you can manage a project accordingly, uh, then, then, you, then you're going to be straight right here. You're going to have everything in order for you to prevent scope creep. Uh, another thing too, I'm going to go right back to that uh, under promise and over deliver. Uh, when you are giving timelines, uh, don't go too fast. Don't set them too slow. Give yourself a little bit of room. Uh, you don't want to put yourself under too much pressure. You want to make it reasonable. And that's, you know, you don't want to like over promise it. You don't want to say like you could finish this project in two weeks when it might take you three. I would give myself four. Give yourself a little bit of extra time and then finish early. That's the that's the over delivering part right there. All right. So main thing is be prepared. Have a process with terms and conditions in place. This allows you to complete projects on time. And even if the client doesn't follow through on their end, they're still happy. We still get paid. There's a final payment date. Now, what about the nightmare clients? You know, what do you do with those clients that are pushing back? There are clients and, and we get clients. I have clients right now. And they like to push every time they get a chance. Anytime they have a chance to try to ask for more, they're doing it. You know, what do you do with them? So when you get clients that like to push the scope a lot. Now, if you have communicated well, there is a clear understanding of expectations. And everything has been detailed in your proposal and contract. And you have done your part as a professional and an expert. Stay friendly. Stay positive, stay professional and assertive, and go back to that agreement every single time. Every time the client asks for work outside of the scope, just take it back to the agreement and let them know their options and what the cost and process will be for the extra work. When a client wants to push out a scope with me, I don't resist, I don't push back. The, I used to. I used to do it a lot. I used to cringe and in the inside I'm like, oh my God, like my, my, I feel the burning in my chest, you know, like when they start asking for additional work. And the reason why I was so upset was because I wasn't getting paid for it. I think anybody would be upset to do more work and not get paid for it because the more work we do without getting paid, you know, the less value, it's like the less we're being valued. And, and, and it's just, I mean, it's, it's, we're making less. <laughs> it's not okay. I mean, I've worked jobs with scope creep was so crazy. When we looked at the hours and put it together, I made like less than a dollar an hour, you know, and that does not feel good. It's not sustainable. Uh, and it's not a way to build a career or a business. But if you got something in place for you to get paid for it, then why not do it? Why limit a client or res push back on them or resist when they want to ask for more? Instead, you have something in place for them. So when a client now comes and says, we want to add something else, you know, my, my response is really, okay, that, that's great. So what, what should we do? Okay, no problem. So we could go ahead and do that. This is what it's going to take. So, you know, are you okay with that? Are you okay with these extra charges? Are you okay with, uh, with this and this new timeline? Yeah, you are fine. Go Okay, we're going to add, add it to our workflow and take care of it. So we don't push back anymore because we know we're getting paid for it. Now, communication is key. If the project goes out of scope, most likely it was due to miscommunication, unclear deliverables, lack of details in the contract and poor project management. And this is the hard truth right here. 
We talk about nightmare clients. We talk about bad clients. We talk about all this stuff. But the thing is, us, the designers, the developers, we need to take accountability. We can't always blame the clients for everything. Thing is, we're still learning how to manage projects correctly, how to communicate the scope, how not to get too excited for a project. We're still learning how to talk to a client. We can't put it on the clients because the clients, they're hiring us because they need our help. We're new, it's going to happen. But the longer we're doing it, the more we deal with these situations, the more we realize that we could prevent it in other ways. And another thing too I didn't put inside here is how many times do we take a job from a client that we knew we shouldn't have, that we saw red flags, that the client says something like, we really don't have that much money, that they said something like, I would do it myself, but I really don't have the time. I just want to get it done cheaply. Or they, they just, we just felt it wasn't the right fit, but we took it anyways because we needed the work. And then the project, of course, go sideways and it becomes a headache. So the thing is, I really feel this this is my personal belief and I'm only going off of my experience that 95% of the time when a project went wrong, it was on me. I, I, I have to take the accountability for that. I have to learn from it and I have to grow from it. Uh, another side thing, just away from the business side, this is my own uh, personal belief on difficult situations that every time I'm in one, it's an opportunity for me to grow. And so when I take that belief and I apply it into my business and we have a difficult situation with a client, if I were to take a step back and I were to look at my side, what could I have done differently in this project? There's always something that I could have done to made have gone better and then I could take that to the next one. So, preventing scope creep, I'm here to tell you Absolutely, 100% with full just proof, <laughs> just proof of it that it is possible to complete a project within the initial scope agreement and keep the client happy. It is possible to cut it out of your work completely and to keep everything within the scope of work. And that is it for the slideshow, open for Q&A. And thank you, everyone. I'm so grateful for everyone that was here for this call. I really hope it helps. And now let's go ahead and open it up for open discussion, uh, questions, uh, any kind of feedback. I think on the uh, chat, like Clement, you asked about like uh, this about the slide. Also, own money or must be paid. What do you mean by that? Like you want to know about. It. Okay. Okay, all money's owed must be paid. So let's say uh, you've already got your down payment uh, and you've already like, okay, you should have your project broken up in milestones first of all. And let's say the first milestone is this one and you got the second one and then the third one. Depending on what milestone you're at and how farther along that you got, first off, the deposit is forfeited. And second, whatever work that you've done is is yours. I mean, you could even put it in your contract that the entire project is owed. You can do that. In fact, I mean, think about it. When you go buy a cell phone and you sign up for a plan to get your discount on the cell phone and you cancel your plan, they're not going to say, okay, just pay us for the months that you use it. They're going to say, no, give us our money. You agreed to this. You know, like we're a business, you're a business, this is your responsibility. So you are right, you are in the right to collect what you're owed for the project. Now you could be fair and you could feel like, okay, like we'll just charge for whatever work that we've done. Or you could feel like, you know, like we need to charge this amount. But definitely put in your contract. I, I put it in ours, like the final payment, that payment, the date that we agreed on, like that date, the money is owed. Like, I don't, you know, I might make an exception depending on the circumstance. You know, maybe they went through something difficult, but if they just flaked out, nah, not yours. Yeah. Yo. I mean, 
Uh, about the contract, <coughs> is it uh, you have default contract that the customer choose the option or you give the customer already customize uh, contract? Oh, uh, wait, what do you mean? Can you ask that again? Uh, about the contract. Mm -hmm. The contract is already default. I mean, uh, you already get the option because you get some option, right? Option one, two, three, and then they choose the option on the contract. Or when uh, when the, before you get the contract, before you get the contract, you already set the contract, customize contract. According to they choose before. Yeah, so we choose it before. I give them the options and the proposal. So on the proposal, oh. we're we're defining exactly what the scope is and what we're going to agree to. Once we have all that agreed, then we add that into the contract. Okay, so the process is discovery call, the proposal, and then the contract. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, in our next call, we're going to be going through that, in fact, the onboarding process. So next week, we're going to be talking about onboarding and getting a client from lead to contract to down payment as quickly as possible and with doing everything we've talked in this call and the last call. I know I'm jumping ahead right now, but yeah, that's, that, that's the plan for the next one. Cool, Rashav. What's up, man? Yeah, something. Uh, I just wanted to um, add something uh, on what Clement asked the question. I think uh, it's always. I mean, I am yet to experiment with this, but I think it's a nice idea to write straight up in the contract that uh, even if you know you kind of don't respond or be a non-responding client you still owe the money because, and if you mention in the contract, you still owe all of it. It will be in the mind of the customer that they cannot just disappear like this. I mean, at the time of asking the payment, yes, I, as a, you know, I will not charge them for the things I have not done, but at least I can mention them to prevent them to disappear. And in the situation, if it comes up that they did disappear, then at least I can say that, look, you owed me for the whole project as per the contract, but I am on a goodwill gesture. I'm just asking you for what I have done. And that's where you end things, you know, but you can always mention that you are liable to pay all the work of the total project if you disappear, but you can always just ask for the work you have done, but that happens later, but at least it will cut out the customer disappearing thinking in mind that he might have to pay and he will not get anything out of it. So, you know, like that. True. If I, if I knew I was going to have to pay regardless, I'm going to want to make sure I follow through with it, you know, but if I knew like a, like, you know, like order, like I, we'd order on Lazada here, you know, when we buy stuff and sometimes I'll get cash on delivery because I know I could just say no if I don't want it. But you know, if I purchase it with my card, there's no refund, you know, like you got to get it. So I make sure it's like really what I want. Uh, I just do want to point out something though. Um, don't feel bad for charging the client for the full project. Don't feel bad for it because the thing is, if they disappear or if they cancel it, they're actually costing you more money because at the time you're working on the project, you could have been working on another lead. You could have been working for someone else. You know, there's another way in your business that that will suffer, that will that you'll lose out on it. So really, that money is owed for a reason. So I have a kind of like a similar situation with what you just said. As you know, I have a project with my my friend who is a cafe owner, and then he she has a one cafe and one restaurant in town. The restaurant they kind of shut down. 
and they knew they're gonna shut down because of their pay rent was like rising up, so they're going to shut down. But they are when they we decided to design, they didn't tell me they're gonna shut down their their one of business. So we made a design for restaurant and coffee. And then now they tell me that oh we shut down the restaurant and then like I asked them like when did you know about it? Like half a year ago? And then like when did we why did you tell me of when we designed it? And then he said like oh because I don't know and then like <laughs> he asked me to change design only for the coffee. Like coffee specialty like specialty coffee uh website cafe, something like that. That was very frustrating to ask about like pay me more because even they knew they are going to shut down their one of their business and then but they just didn't tell me and then I have a like or energy to put down everything with the organic food restaurant with the specialty coffee making together in the one website and it's mm -hmm. one part it's gone actually which is making me tr make me easy to make a website true because I can only focus on coffee thing and anyway just like in this case I I feel like I have to charge about like what I spend time to like you know, brainstorming and designing about this and I actually made like two page it's like six page website that I made already two the like front page and the middle page and then but like I kind of feel like oh, this is a friend so I know that they don't have money enough that's why they close another you know like restaurant I kind of feel like ah oh, what I what I need to do and then I also the contract about like if I if you want me to do extra work I mean you need to pay the extra charge per hour but then I don't know it's kind of a sympathy going on and then like but it's my friend and then I also when I lose my time I had to redesign the website as well because <laughs> that's another thing was like why you didn't tell me it's like it's, it's already you already knew it half a year ago and then like yeah that happened and then yeah it just frustrated very and it's Thai style kind of like they knew but they didn't tell me when mm. it happened <laughs> did they uh did they tell you that they wanted the website to have both the restaurant and coffee side in the beginning yeah when we when we designed and at that time the restaurant was open and I didn't know about they're gonna close but did they tell you specifically like this is what we want. We want one side to focus on the restaurant. We want one side to focus yeah. on this. So yeah. even we had the argument about like organic restaurant doesn't really match with specialty coffee because it's the color difference or the design will be different. So I want to pick one side of it or make it two separate websites. And they said, no, 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 we're going to put it together because we are like the same, you know, like they're a couple and we are run the same company. And then like we have to think about how to make organic restaurant and the specialty coffee put it together in the website and then that was a month a month and like five weeks ago and then oh. it closed their their restaurant two weeks ago as it came to dine <laughs> uh, it's a tough one though too right now i mean i i have to admit i have to admit like you know like you know, like I, I know, like I might sound like I'm firm on scope and, and stuff like that, but at the same, I'm really, I, I stay flexible too, and I try to be understanding. You know, mm -hmm. I, I do up to a point. I mean, I, I still have my own business. You have your own business. You have your own rent and livelihood and everything. You know, so you can't keep working for free. You know, but I mean, we are like our clients right now are going through a bit of a crisis. We have to take care yeah. of them, but. What what can, have you tried maybe setting an endpoint to the project like like define because it sounds like the project already went haywire it sounds it's already it's already messed up it's already yeah. like a mess yeah. uh, maybe to help you out to get it back on track is to create the process and not like not much it's like what's the end point we finish this this and this mm -hmm. and before working get the client to agree on that. And then maybe ask them like, you know, uh, ask them like, we could do this, this, and this. Are you okay with this to finish it? And then anything else we could do, we could we could talk about, you know, what it will take extra. But, you know, I have to move on as well. I have other work to do. That's yeah, what I just, um, they their decoration of the cafe they just made and it's not finished. So also they are not opening because of the restriction of talent that 
but we cannot take an asset. So it's also difficult to find the timeline. Like it's also like rely on the government situation. So I will see out with them like in few weeks, and then the restriction will probably finish in like middle of May or something. That most of the the place going to open, and then like people can do normal thing, and they can take a picture with the people. And yeah, but yeah, I think I have to do something, and then I I also feel like very sorry for their just what happened in Thailand and the business yeah. itself that like they don't have a client, that's why they have to close and they cannot pay for the rent of the restaurant. And yeah, but just it was very frustrating for me. Like, why you didn't tell me? Like, why did you tell tell me you're going to? Uh, yeah, it could be changed. And then another thing, uh, I had a. Another client who doesn't have uh, any idea of SEO or the good design eyes for uh, pictures. So they gave me shit pictures to put it on my website. <laughs> I feel like this is not what I want to do, and, but this is not what I want to put on the like, front page. But that's only they gave me. What would you do? How would you just say that like your 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 picture is shit and you have to take picture with the like better <laughs> picture? And also, some people doesn't know what it's about SEO and how it affects to your their business on itself. And trying to like you know do the basic SEO at least like Google Search Console and like a, and a meta text and those things but some of people doesn't know what it is and i always tell i always like trying to educate them what it is and then but they still give me the shit quote about their like website front page and what would you do in this kind of case do you tell them the truth like your picture shit like <laughs> in a kind way <laughs> <laughs> in a I, tell, I tell them like yeah i tell them just honestly well First off, I, I find out about that before the job. Like, I find out, you know, like, what kind of images are you going to use? Like, you know, like, I, I want to know, are you guys having a photographer? Are you doing it in-house? Are you just doing it with, you know, an old Android phone? You know, how are you, how are you taking your pictures? And uh, then I also give them requirements for pictures, for images as well. Like, the sizes, I want full ones. We'll do the compressing and image optimization and if they can't provide images that's fine i'll just put in fillers i'll even put in their bad images look at not every thing is not every project you do is going to be a portfolio piece and you can't treat it like that that was one of my mistakes i did in the beginning i was designing for myself and when i did that i took on too much uh my ego got in the way when i was doing yeah. that and then it caused frustration it's not my site. I could give my advice. I could put in their shit pictures and just tell them, advise them. You're going to do a whole lot better if you, you know, invest in proper photography. Or we could even put other filler images right now, you know, to help out with that. But here's the crazy thing: sometimes shit pictures performs well. Why? I don't know. Some bad sites, some bad websites, bad designs get leads. It just works like that. It's crazy, you know. And for the SEO part, uh, like, what do you mean? Do you mean like for like the title tag, like the tagline of the website, like yeah, that? Yeah, title tag and the taglines or like meta tags. And then uh, some people doesn't have like a skill with the writing, right? It just depends on the people. And then, but they like also suggesting just like like feels like making the text like pushing the people to do something on my website like you have to present your website more like smoothly or even you're selling the stuff like you can just sell it nicely on a website but like what they what they like write down and the contents like say like uh, bye 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 and then like i don't want to put those kind of text on the website and then i and also it doesn't match with the design and also it doesn't really appealing to the people like who visit your website and then also you know the meta tag is only short only two or three sen sentences you can see on the uh google uh, search and then that's really important to like track attract the, the client's eyes but they don't understand how 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 much you have to think about 
to the met to put to put the meta tag to just like grab one attention from the you know like searchers and yeah. then yeah. yeah and then they just gave me the like shit coat and like they're like oh, I, I don't want to put this one on there <laughs> it's their side if they want that on there it's okay we do offer seo opt like a seo setup service if they want yeah. to pay if they want to pay us for the setup service and we already have it ready we have a price for it we give them the option inside the proposal if you want to go for it we'll write the tagline we'll write the meta we'll find the keywords we'll do the you know we'll set up we use seo press and mm -hmm. i'll set that up for them but if they don't pay for it it's you know it's up to them we let them know they need it and when they're ready mm -hmm. for it to invest in it you know they can mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It's kind of sad for me that like it's like conversion is very important by the meta text for like people I know. understand the thing kind of like oh like I make a website and then <laughs> you see the value. You know, like you're you're going to all you could do is try to explain it to them, but the more you go on, you're gonna to start to find more quality clients that will yeah. look and that will be ready. I know at first mm -hmm. at first like I, this is me, I, I attracted a lot of clients that they, they didn't understand, they weren't ready to listen, and no matter what I said to them, they, they just did whatever they wanted to do, you know? And, yeah. and it, it was a good learning experience, you know? It taught me, it was all part of the process of learning, but then you will, the more quality clients will come along, and they'll mm -hmm. see the value, because if you already have that inside yourself where your main goal is to help them succeed, where it's frustrating mm -hmm. you that they won't do what they need to do and you know this is what they need to succeed, hold on to that because the clients mm -hmm. will come, they'll see that value and you'll really be able to help them. Yeah, I'm looking yeah. for that client. <laughs> They're clients. coming. They're coming. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, Lauren, what's up? <laughs> Sorry, I'm late, guys. <laughs> it's all good. I actually have a question for you, Jeff. Sure. Um, and I'm not sure, obviously, if I'm late, if you already touched on it, but... We have a client who's just been a nightmare already and they haven't even signed the contracts. <laughs> and you just have that gut feeling of like, oh man, this is like, we haven't even been paid yet. This is not going to go well. Mm. What is your experience on kind of bowing out and saving face? And because we have already sent the contracts. We have not sent the deposit, but we have sent like, hey, let's get started. And it's been just already you know like in another facebook group i'm in somebody asked that question right there about that like how to say no and the power that you feel when you say no what helps me right now is i've taken so many of those projects i should have said no and gone through so many stressful situations and pain that i remember it and when I'm getting ready to go for it and like part of me wants the money, part of me feels like, but it's money, you know, it's good amount. I start to look forward to the frustration, the stress. And ultimately, every single time I take one on, I end up losing because it takes, it deviates me from my own business. It'll take me months away from my, and spending months away from building on our business and our brand is is uh it's really impactful in our growth so but if you've already gone like yeah sure okay sure and then now it's like you know what <laughs> like please don't sign <laughs> please please find something wrong with us and fire us before we start <laughs> oh i don't know i mean you could always <laughs> say <laughs> you could always say, i mean i, I don't want to say lie you know be honest but you could just be honest to say, look, we're really excited about it, but you know, as we're preparing for the project, uh, we just don't think this is going to be a right fit, and I feel like you would be better off with someone else. Let us refer you to somebody, and then refer yeah. them to us. No, I would. I'm <laughs> just kidding. A no. Where I'm joking. There was miscommunication in the beginning, and they had to hire a California-based company. And I'm not California-based. <laughs> uh, so there might be a chance I can use that as an excuse. But I was just curious, like, if you've gone too far, how have you stepped out so that other people could maybe... I've done it once. I've yeah. done it once. I've done it once. And I don't know if it was the right thing when I did it, actually. And, and, uh, and uh, I think I talked to you also when I was going through it. It was when we took on a job with the client. He had too small of a budget. We were really slow at the time. 
I wanted something new, but something told me I should not take on this job. That he kept asking for more and more stuff. I saw it as becoming a problem, but yet we went forth with it. And we got into week one, finished the design, sent him the design, and then he came back and just changed everything. And he just changed it. I was like, oh, this is going to be a headache. You know what? I don't want this job. I'm going to give him all of his money back. And I did that. I gave him all of his money back. And I told him straight up, like, I just don't think this is going to work out. Now, I don't know if what I did was right. And I actually felt bad about it because I have this thing of integrity. And I want to make sure that I keep my side of the street clean. So I ended up reaching out to him after a few months after that. And I told him truthfully, I said, look it. I went and saw your old website is up and his old website is horrible. It's not responsive, anything. You know, it's one of those ones that fits on the page that's that big with all the content squished up. And I told him, I'm like, you know what? I want to make this right. Let me at least rebuild what you have on your site at no cost. And I, I think it was stupid. <laughs> I you were way too generous. Yeah. Way too. I ended up charging him 500 bucks on top of like a deposit and yeah. stuff, you know, but, uh, I don't know. I just wanted to keep my side of the street clean. I wanted to make sure I don't do anything wrong. Uh, but then as I'm doing this, this new one, like it's coming up again. Like I remember why I said no. And it just makes me, it just makes me be more cautious on the jobs I take going forward. Cause I don't want to go through that again. So, but, but you haven't started yet though. So if you haven't started yet, you haven't taken their money yet. Right. Um, you still got, I think you can still bow out without, you know, without doing anything unethical. Yeah, I think so. I think it's just a little bit of that lingering, like COVID-19 is going on. Should I take everything that comes, even though my gut like wants to vomit <laughs> yes. at the thought of this project. Right. So it's a little like, I think that's why I was saying sure, sure, sure. But uh, now I don't know if the money's worth it. Like you said, it could be a loss of money as well. And bad you could trust your God. Signal. like that's really like the yeah. key thing of the freelancing i think it's true it's a good point Did you? Uh, all right i find my way out thank you <laughs> <laughs> and right now with covid19 going on it's getting busy for web design it is about to get really busy out there like i've never gotten so many leads it's like i'm getting leads on, almost on a daily basis it's crazy like it is about to get busy because i really feel like uh the value of online business taking the business online is going to go up i really i, I just feel that way like because it is important we already knew it like us as designers and developers we know the value of having a properly done website clients don't always know that value but i think that because of the situation that that uh, uh that that uh, uh awareness is about to come up Cool. Any uh, questions? All right, guys. Well, it's it's been real. <laughs> I hope this helped. Uh, again, you don't have to do scope creep. Trust me. You can prevent it. You could eliminate it. And you could also make sure you're getting paid for what you're supposed to get paid for and being treated right with value. I hope this helps out. Uh, Next week, we are going to do, we're going to continue kind of the flow and the direction we're going. And we're going to talk about onboarding and about the onboarding process and putting a process into place. Because, I mean, it's like we talk about putting proposals, we talk about doing proposals, we talk about contracts, but how to put that all in a process to streamline it in order to onboard a client, get all that information out and quickly get them from lead to deposit. And then get the project going. I get uh, yeah, one it. more question. Who sure. I mean, uh, for me, as a starting new business, as a as an agency, how is there any how do you have any recommendation to get some, some kind like proposal template, contract template, something like that? And then we just customize the content. How to get a proposal template? Yeah, proposal template, contract template. Do you use template or do you design by yourself? 
Oh, I use a template that we use here. Like it's already built out. And so in the template is we just change information inside of it. So, okay, I mean, do yeah. you have recommendation for the online? How to get the how to get the Microsoft template the best the best source? Uh, there's one that's paid that's really good. It's with the future. I could go ahead and send the link to you, or I could put it in the group. Uh, also, I'm polishing up our proposals. I, I plan on adding our proposals to uh, the BBE resource page. So I'm going to try to get those up there soon. That's going to be the next uh, thing that I put up. Is going to be a template for it, for the proposals that others can use as well. So I'll do that as quickly as possible. But for the time being, uh, go through go through a bunch of them. I mean, you could you could search and gather a bunch of them, man. There's one that's really good. It's a paid one. It's like sixty dollars, but so worth it because they it goes more into learning about proposals. Okay. Last, last, last. <laughs> no problem. Do you, do you send online proposal or uh, send the physical proposal to sign? Oh no, so online. I yeah. Yeah, we do a PDF, and we only have them sign the contract. They don't have to sign the proposal, so we just oh. send a PDF over. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. All right, guys. It was this was awesome. I'm really glad that everyone was here, and I look forward to seeing everyone next week. Again, I'm so bad with goodbyes. <laughs> All right. Let me. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Thank bye -bye. you. Bye -bye. All right, bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, bye. bye, -bye.